Well, what's to prevent Apple or, or Facebook from removing my content online simply because I don't abide by their standards? There are rumors today that a lot of these social media giants are going to start banning or restricting content from people who they deem climate change deniers. Not even people who acknowledge that, that climate change is happening, but worry that it may not be happening to the same extent that some on the left say and don't look like the left solutions. Those people may not be safe from the predations of social media also. So again, what is the exactly what exactly is so terrible? The company said it removed Alex Jones's pages for glorifying violence, which violates our graphic violence policy, and using dehumanizing language to describe people who are transgender, Muslim, and immigrants, which violates our hate speech policies. Again, this is where we get into some serious, serious issues. What exactly violates that hate speech policy? But one of the big problems is that you have too many folks on the left who decide that anything they don't like now. Is, a lot of people are, uh, particularly Jones's defenders, are, are saying that they're worried that this might lead to other pages, particularly conservative media pages, mm -hmm. uh, being removed. I, I think it's important to note, though, that Alex Jones had really flagrantly violated a lot of the community standards that YouTube, that Facebook, that Apple have had in place for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you look at it, um, they they say that they removed them because they violated the standards. But these, the, Alex Jones had been violating these standards for, for some time. Yeah. Uh, and they only actually took action after weeks of media pressure, after weeks of the media outlets saying, you know, you say that this would violate your standards, so why is this still being allowed to be posted? And so Apple was the first at the bat this morning, or last night, sorry, with a uh, uh, removal of his content, uh, and now we're seeing it trickle so out. So it was Apple and then the domino effect. For him, he'll always be able to put it out there in the world. If you think this is the end of Alex Jones, you are very, very wrong. And if you see the people that are defending him today, they are vehement about defending him. Wherever he is able to distribute moving forward, they will flock to it. They will support him. They will buy his supplements and feed their inner gladiator the way he called for them to do. That's literally what he said. If, you, if you're worried about this, buy my supplements so that you can feed your inner gladiator. What a weird response, but the guy's a weird guy. But I personally think it's a really good thing that even though I vehemently disagree with 98% of the things that Alex Jones says, and I do believe he is a very harmful person, I will go as far as to say that it's a very good thing that you can't get rid of him completely. That's the point of the internet. That's the point of a free and open internet. That's the point of net neutrality. You know, if we got rid of net neutrality, then it's the ISPs who could choose to ban him next. Comcast could refuse to serve his videos or, or his website to you at all, AT&T, Verizon, and so on and so forth. Fortunately, they probably won't do that right now because they're still up in the air about net neutrality, so they're probably not going to shut him down just yet. ...disservice to it. However, I think InfoWars is the canary in the coal mine, and as much as, again, I can say it a million times, I'm not really a fan of I don't like what InfoWars does. I don't like what Alex Jones does. I defend their right to have their channel and say these crazy things for, for, for a few important... There's a few reasons. I mean, first of all, people should be allowed to express themselves even if they're nuts. Uh, I mean, let, let's 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 entertain the idea that Alex Jones is actually a crackpot tinfoil, you know, lunatic, which many people in the mainstream they hold that view. Does that mean that somebody who has something wrong with their mind isn't allowed to speak? They're not allowed to use Facebook. They're not allowed to use YouTube. What if somebody is actually mentally ill and they have a YouTube channel and they start ranting and raving about the you know moon gremlins trying to steal their cheese? Do they have a right to speak? In my opinion, they do. Just because. It, it, it worries me that we're trying to draw a distinction between what we think is sane and what other pe you know, and, and, and what should be allowed to be said. All right, everyone, I've never really been a fan of Alex Jones. Like, I like Paul Joseph Watson stuff's pretty good, but I've never really, you know, been much into Infowars. Now, though, I'm reconsidering that, uh, the logic of that, because I'm looking and seeing Alex Jones just getting basically uh, everything he's ever done banned off Facebook. Again, with no apparent provocation, this follows in the wake of them getting partially kicked off YouTube and getting like a temporary suspension and stuff. They can't live stream, have to have a second channel. Uh, Spotify has banned all of their podcasts, and now uh, Infowars is also off of Apple's uh, product. Which basically means that for Normie America, Infowars doesn't exist. Now, the logic and reason behind this decision, which is obviously these corporations got together to do this, because of pitchfork waving mobs. Based on, well, he's, he's like a vast conspiracy theorist, he's hateful. No, he's not. Can, can you show me anything on these shows that you've banned that's act, that actually rise? Is it criminal? It's not illegal, what he's saying. As far as I know, he doesn't sit there using slurs. In fact, for the most part, he, he keeps the swearing to a PG-13 level. 
I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at these. There's like Sarah Jiang can be can be there and literally like ramble about uh, racial racial things all day. She's never going to get kicked off any platform. Everyone can talk to her. No one, no boycotting of advertisers. Alex Jones like says, "Oh, reptiles from space are going to get your mind or something," and everyone flips out. Alex Jones has been there since day one. It's like back in the zeitgeist era, people are watching Infowars, dude. Vague reasons. They say harassment, glorifying violence, dehumanizing language. But they almost never point to specific videos or a specific posts. Now, most likely part of their specific reasoning here is when you when you point to specifics, you create definitive lines in the sand. And so if you have a bad actor that's trying to abuse your system, they kind of know where to take it to the line and still get across what they want to get across. But at the same time, it would be nice to know what the rules are so you know if you are breaking them or not. And so when you say something like hate speech towards Muslims or transgender people, what specifically did they say and what do you deem as a company hate speech? Are you talking about slurs? Are you talking about people that have the opinion that a transgender person, that there's something mentally wrong with them? As a company, are you seeing that as an opinion or are you seeing that as hate speech? Do you consider it hate speech if someone calls, let's say, a trans man a woman, right? They misgender, maybe it's on purpose, maybe it's on accident. And so the thing is, when these companies do not cite the specifics and they just read policy, it feels like they are setting up a system that can be easily abused. And while obviously we're talking about Alex Jones and Infowars, which is an outlier, an extreme organization, comparatively, once again, my opinion. I feel it's understandable why there is fear and concern. Now understand when I say that, I'm not equating all conservative outlets to Infowars. But many conservative outlets do feel like they are being suppressed by a lot of these companies. And so it's that last- Facebook, Spotify, and YouTube all completely banned Infowars within 12 hours of each other, clearly suggesting big tech collusion and proving their terms of service are all bullshit. This is political censorship. This is The Purge. Facebook cited language used to describe Muslims, transgenders, and immigrants. They provided zero specific examples as to what we said that was verboten. And neither did Apple, Spotify, or YouTube. But they're private companies. They can ban who they like. No. Facebook, Twitter, and Google have monopolized free speech online. They're a monopoly. They're also working directly with institutions of media. CNN whines all day about Trump threatening press freedoms, while simultaneously lobbying to have its competitors shut down by big tech. America's free press supports censorship. Big tech is colluding with leftist lawmakers on Capitol Hill. Democrat so if you yesterday uh, were looking for Alex Jones, you may have found him. Today, you're not going to find him. I mean, a celebration in some regard for, uh, you know, common decency. However, a very sad day for freedom of speech. Now, iTunes and Facebook, they're private corporations. They can do whatever they want. They can make it up as they go if they want. I don't like it, but they're a private corporation. So if they decide that's what they want to do, well, they're a private corporation and we don't have anything to say about it unless we make them into a utility, which is really bad. Because once we make them into utility, well, good heavens.